Good morning, YouTube. Good morning, those who have called in on this Resurrection Sunday morning. Come on, let's send some hearts up as a way of thanking our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for not being in the grave, but he rose with all power in his hand. Come on, you can do better than that on this Resurrection Sunday morning. Though we may be virtual, we can still give him some praise, give him some glory, send hearts up, thumbs up, make noise in your home wherever you're at as a way of letting God know that you appreciate the fact that he gave his only begotten son. And my brothers and sisters, this is our Resurrection Sunday morning. We may not be in the church building, but we're in the church home where you at, your home. So we thank God for you. Well, we have a lot to cover today on this Resurrection Sunday because we want to pick up from where we've been at the last two weeks dealing with our marriage conference and our singles conference. So we want to pick that up. But we also want to get a word on this great day dealing with Resurrection Sunday. And we have our communion. So I'm asking you to bear with me today. I'm going to try to go as fast as I can, but at the same time, be respectful to you and allow the Holy Spirit to have his way. All right? Well, let's get ready. Let's get ready. Once again, send hearts up, thumbs up, if you don't mind, as we prepare to give God praise and glory. Eternal God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for just waking us up this to witness and see this Resurrection Sunday morning. Lord, we've been through so much from the last Resurrection Sunday, but yet, Lord, we say thank you right now for your grace, your mercy. Lord, forgive us of all our sins right now. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Allow us to be used today, Lord, for your glory, for your praise, Lord. We pray that something be said in a way that would be taught to help those in their marriage, help those in their relationship, help those singles, those widows, those divorcees. Lord, we ask that you would move in a minor way in that home right now. We come, Father God, asking for forgiveness of all our sins, that thou would cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, Lord, we give you the glory. Use me as your mouthpiece, as your vessel, that I rightly divide your word. It's in Jesus' name we pray, and all of God's children did say, amen. Come on, let's give God by way of hearts, and, and no, don't even give the thumbs up, just by way of hearts. Just give God some hearts up right now as a way of saying thank you for allowing us to see this resurrection Sunday morning. All right, let's see what we got here today as we prepare to go into our marriage conference for and singles conference for just a little bit, and then we're going to shift and go right into the word for our Resurrection Sunday, and we'll have communion, and then we'll be on our way um, out, okay? You better enjoy the rest of your day. All right, let's do it. Calvary. Calvary. Deutsch 
at yahoo.com and we'll make sure you get one, okay? Well, let's go right into what we need to deal with today. Once again, this is our marriage and singles conference that we've been covering. Uh, we use for a uh, subject for this uh, conference this year, Living My Life series, Living My Life series. And now a lot of things we have covered over the last two weeks. I'm not going to try to go in detail. I'll just run through the slides real quick. We talked about marriage. It's God's design for life and love. We, we talked about how God has given us a helper for those who are in a marriage. And then we start talking about um, around about 10 biblical um, principles for marriage. Not going to go through all of those. Just slide right through the slides. With us, uh, the husband is commanded by God to love his wife. We talked about the husband and wife. They are joint heirs to life. Six, we talked about the marriage. Um, once a, another principle, uh, principle number six, man needs a wife. Uh, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm just rolling right through with my brothers and sisters. Hopefully you have the answers. But we talked about uh, top seven mistakes uh, Christian couples make. And uh, we talked about the marriage, but also can be applied to your boo. <laughs> All right, step number, I mean, mistake number seven, you think your marriage is different, and then we talked about you ignore discussing problems, five, four, three, two, I'm just going down the list real quick. Uh, we talked about helpful marriage tips, uh, private matters should be kept private, uh, financial habits can uh, make or break a marriage, and we went all the way down to, I think, and then we did a quick review um, and we talked about the singles and divorcees as well as the widows last week. And that's where I want to pick it up. We talked about loneliness, happy and successful. We talked about the four steps to happiness. And that is trust, delight, commit and rest. Uh, we talked about those four things. And uh, we talked about how you have to prepare yourself. And you're going to prepare yourself. You'll be dealing with um, the physical body, the mental mind, the mental uh, emotion, financial, social, and all these above. And we also talked about the spiritual, okay? And uh, as a Christian, our first duty is to prepare ourselves spiritually, okay? So let's see where we at today. Uh, we dealt with all that, um, and I believe... We end it by taking care of business, okay? If that's true, why don't you send hearts up real quick? All right, let's get into what we need to talk about today, all right? So let's talk about the marriage conference uh, dealing with the singles. Now, we're still with dealing with the singles, and I want to pick it up now talking about preparation for young ladies. Preparation for young ladies doesn't mean uh, just young, but just ladies in general. So let's look at that real quick, the preparation for young ladies. That should be in your book. That should be in your book. All right. That's the things you're going to have to write down. All right. Let's see what we got here. Solomon said that it would be better for a man to live in a desert than with an angry woman, argumentative woman. All right. That's, you need to be writing that word. <laughs> write those two words, angry and argumentative. Uh, you got to not write those two down. But listen, he said it rather, he'd rather be in a desert than to have to deal with all that from a woman, <laughs> and oh, I know, I know y'all don't like that, but I'm just telling you what the word said, because Proverbs 27, verse 15, it, it writes uh, right here, continually dropping in a very rainy day, watch this, and a continuous woman or a light, in other words, complaining, you know, he's saying really, you almost just dripping like a faucet. And both would drive you crazy. <laughs> uh, don't get mad at the pastor. Don't get mad with it. But he said, "Don't be, don't be a contentious woman, single ladies. I'm talking to you. Don't do that. Start right now. Learning how to di discipline your own conversation. You know, work on the development to as to be meek and have a quiet spirit. And sometimes, my brothers and sisters, as the woman, you you." <laughs> I know you don't like this, but I'm going to say it anyway. You talk too much. Yeah, and I know, man, he talked too much too, but I'm talking to the ladies right now. You don't, don't, don't shut this, don't shut off Facebook, don't shut off YouTube, don't, don't hang the phone up now. We're dealing with the ladies, okay? And so he talks about how that, and let's go to the next part where he talks about 
uh, in order to prepare to be a great lady, whether for marriage, I don't know, uh huh, or not, you you must learn not to be. I know you don't want to write this, but watch this: lazy or waste time in idleness. And see, we did it. Now you know, I said young ladies because we're living in this day right now. The younger they are, the lazier they are. Uh huh. Yeah, and and and, and, and you got to understand that if you want to prepare yourself for marriage, then you cannot be lazy. Mm. And all, you know, you can't be around here always want to gossip and feeling sorry for yourself. Instead, learn how to organize your day. I know I ain't getting no hearts today. I won't get no. That's all right. I, I prepared my mind this morning before I got, got here to start. I, I'm already, I got enough amens locked up, okay? Let's go to the, let's go for the preparation of the young men. Because I know y'all ready to hurry and get off the ladies. Get off of them. Let's deal with the preparation for young men. Uh, let's deal with that. The preparation for young men. Preparation for young men. And this is what I want to get with. God is expecting the young men to remember who they are. Watch this. In Christ and act like it. That's what he's saying. He, he expects us to act like it. And I'm reminded of... 1 Timothy chapter uh, 6, verses 11 and 12, it reads as following, But thou, man of God, flee these things and follow after, watch this, righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. And then <laughs> Paul tells his spiritual son, Timothy, he said, Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession, young men, before many witnesses. And so we're living in a day, even with our young men, the younger they are, watch this, they have no guidance of how to be a man. See, I, I, I haven't been around long, but I've been, long, I've been around long enough that a man should act like a man. Teach, Lord, I think I will this morning. And that's why Paul was able to say to Timothy, watch this, in, sec in the 6th chapter, verse 11, once again, he said, "Be," he said, but thou, man of God, flee these things and follow men. Follow what? Follow after righteousness. And so God is expecting the young men uh, to remember that they are, to, they are in Christ. And you need to be writing that down and you ought to act yeah, you ought to act like it. You ought to act like it. You ought to act like it. Let's go to the next one right here. Um, and God, watch this. This is the part about you. Watch this. Me and you ought to understand this about your body belongs to God. Your body belongs to God. Here it is right here. Your body belongs to God. Watch what he said here. And this is where you need to fill in, men, men, men. You need to fill this in. God did not create us for death, but he created us for life. Okay? You ought to act like there's some life in you as a man. Uh, not getting no amen this morning. All right. All right. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to the next one. And I want to talk now. <laughs> Watch this. Here's the next thing I want to talk about. Six tips to feeling happy. To, to feel happily single while you're single. How to feel happy while you're single. Don't you got to worry. Don't, don't talk about, I'm going to get happy when I get him or when I get her. No. Start now learning how to be happy with yourself. There's six things I want to give you real quick. And uh, six things, and you're going to have to write these down. Here it is right here. Number one, number one, how to be happy and why, even while you're single. Here it is right here. Number one, be okay with where you are. Watch this. Right now. Uh, right now. Be where you uh, you gotta be happy where you're at right now. If you're not married now, be happy where you're at right now. Stop worrying about trying to be like those down the street that may be married. Teach, Lord. I think I will. Many single people spend a lot of time, watch this, looking for a partner. While there's nothing wrong with getting, <laughs> getting, get, getting a date, there's nothing wrong with dating, but like this, but being able to enjoy where you 
you are right now in your life. You need to do how to enjoy being who you are right now towards the word. Watch this. So you got to write number one, be okay where you are right now. Number two, here's number two, get to know yourself on a deep level. Now, yeah. Get to know yourself on a deep level. Many people have the tendency to lose themselves, watch this, in relationships, even in your marriage. They start doing everything that the partner wants them to do. And they change themselves to the fact that they can't do nothing for themselves. Get to know yourself on a deep level. Teach, George. I think I will. Number three, number three, my brother, love with yourself first. You sing to learn how to fall in love with you first. Okay? Learn how to fall in love with you first. Man, this, this, this is getting good. I, I don't even know. We, we're going to have to come back next week. Y'all got to come back next week. I, I, I can't rush this. Fall in love with yourself first. Number four, do whatever you want. No one can tell you you not to. This is the time to do what you want to do. You know, once you get married, once you're in that relationship, the other person trying to tell you what to do, you trying to tell them what to do. But this is a good time, my brother and sister, as you are single, to do whatever you want to do. Watch this. That's pleasing to God. Now, just because I said do whatever you want to do, don't mean you just have a fool. I'm sorry. Don't, don't mean that you just act crazy. Yeah, but you do what you want to do because you're not answering to anyone as a single person. Teach, Lord. Number five, reconnect with your favorite people. <laughs> Somebody said, what do you mean? Reconnect with your favorite people. It is. Um, it, it really goes back right here to learning how to love yourself first and doing what you want to do because even when you're in a relationship, you're married, many times we lose our connection with people that we, we have known for years. Just because you get married, just because you, you're single does not mean that you can't have friends and here's the part I'm going to mess some of y'all up right now. Of the opposite sex. You can have friends as the opposite sex. That does not mean that sex is in it. Teach, though. I wish y'all I, I get off me this morning. Get off me. Get off me. Let me teach this thing. Let me teach it. Watch this. Reconnect with your favorite people. People, some of y'all, you grew up with some people. You know there was some great people growing up. Now, they're doing something every, in, in it and everything. Don't you reconnect with them. I'm talking about those good friends that you had. Those good family members. Good family members that you had. Those Good family members that you had. Learn how to reconnect with them. Number six. Number six. Let's move real quick because I want to just shift and get right into the resurrection sermon. And then we'll come back and we'll deal with that football stuff uh, on the second Sunday. Whenever we get to the second Sunday, that's our church anniversary. I got to figure out how to do that too. All right. Number six. Get back out there when the time is right. Oh, you need to write that. Get back out there. What do you mean get back out there? See, start, start. If you need a date, go date. When the time is right. Now, if your heart is all broken, that ain't the right time. Teach, Lord. You all confused, don't know what to do. That's not the right time. That's why I didn't put number, I put number six last because you got to work on you first before you run out there. <laughs> get off that social media sometimes. Take a break if you have to. Get you right. Then get back out there. Get well past in the game. You know what you're trying to get. Get excited about the possibility of falling in love again. You never wrong with falling in love. I love you. Ah, love you. Mm. I love you, Lord. Today I'm shifting now because you care for me. Mm. And such a special way We'll come back next week That's why I praise you Oh my I lift you up mm, And I magnify your, your name Oh my, my, my That's why my heart is filled With praise 
love you. Mm. I love you. Yeah. I love you, Lord, today. Oh, my. Because you care for me. Mm. It's such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your, your name. Mm. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Come on, give God some hearts. Give him some hearts as a way of praise. Luke chapter 23. <laughs> Luke chapter 23, just give me about six minutes. Luke chapter 23, verse 33, it reads as following. When they were come to the place, which is called, watch this, Calvary, there they crucified him, teach, Dodge, and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. For about six minutes, my brother and sister, that's all I need, about six minutes to make sure I give you some resurrection, as they would say, something about Easter, or something about resurrection, just six minutes, because we'll come back next week and continue the series on living my life with the marriage conference and singles conference. Here it is right here. I want to talk six minutes, six minutes, and I know I can do it in six minutes. The good thing about Calvary, the good thing about Calvary, the good things about Calvary. I want to give you three quick ones real quick. Uh, point number one, the first thing that's good about Calvary is, watch this, there's a place of forgiveness. On this Resurrection Sunday, you need to know that, that Calvary is a place of forgiveness. Here it is right here, Luke chapter 23, verses 33 and 34. It reads as following, when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him, the male factors, one on the right hand and one on the left. Then Jesus, watch this, then said Jesus, Father, here it is right here, forgive them for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiments and cast lots. Oh, I, I feel like talking to y'all this morning. Watch this. The Bible records that there was two male factors were on the cross with Jesus. One on the left, one on the right, two criminals. And you got to understand, my brother and sister, when he used these words, Father, forgive them, grammatically speaking, it's used as what is known as the second heiress. Uh, watch this active imperative move. Teach, George, which simply means, watch this, imperative move simply means a command or instruction. And Jesus is giving instruction to the Father. Father, he's commanding the Father, please forgive them because they know not what they do. And I don't know about you, but you ought to be glad we serve, a we serve Jesus as our Savior who can instruct, who can command, who can intercede on our behalf to God to, to forgive us. So point number one, Calvary is a place of forgiveness. Number two, my brothers and sisters, I got about, about three more minutes. Number two, number two, another good thing about Calvary is point number two, it's a place of faith. Yeah, it's a place of faith. Here it is right here. I'm reading from Luke chapter 23 verse again. Chapter 23 again. I'm going to focus in verses 39 through 43. You have it on the screen right here. Let me just read it real fast. And one of the male factors which was hanging railed on him saying, if I be Christ, say that something else. And be, and but the other uh, answer rebuked him saying, does not thou fear God seeing that thou Watch this, seeing that thou in the same condemnation, and he indeed justly, here it is, here it is right here, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man, good God Almighty, has done nothing amiss, done nothing wrong. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, 
Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Thou shalt be with me in paradise. Why do I say that, number one, that why do I say number two is a place of faith? I say that because Calvary teaches us the valuable truths in faith that we need to receive salvation. Watch this. It's not about all your deeds and your and your goods that you have done and what you're doing, but your salvation is based on your faith that you have in Jesus. Oh, the time almost up. Time is a place of forgiveness, is a place of faith. And then finally, as we get ready in and get right ready for communion, it's a place of a final, watch this, place of final victory. He said in Luke, shh. Past Luke 23, get to Luke 24, verses 5 through 7. He reads as following. Here it is right here. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto him, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here. Here's a place of final victory. Why? Why here it is. But he is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. Then if I, if I had time, I'd do it like this. Verse 7 saying, the son of man, I'm about to pull it, y'all, must be, uh, must be delivered into the hands of a sinful man. And the Bible, the Bible said, and be crucified and the third day shall rise again. And so carry, carry means a place of final victory. And the Bible lets us know that he, he is not there. And I got to leave you this morning. But before I leave you, and I feel good real quick, y'all, before I leave you now, that faith is, <laughs> Calvary is the place of our victory, yeah. and he died there mm, for final victory, yeah. and oh, death, <laughs> where is our sting now? you know today that through Jesus today uh, we have the final victory uh, what's the final victory uh, we have joy mm, unspeakable joy we have peace uh, that surpasses all understanding and you hang on in there uh, don't give up on God because God won't give up on you uh, uh, the good things about Calvary. The good things about Calvary. 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 church home, reach out to us uh, in Antioch. We'd love for you to be a part of the ministry where we're at. We have not returned into the building, but we're very close, and so in the meantime, we'll continue doing our virtual worship service. Hi. I would apologize, but I don't, because there's so much in this book, and many of you all already told me, Pastor, take your time. So, we're going to take our time to continue the series on living my life. So, 
Let's do that. Um, let's get ready to take the communion together. Uh, my brothers and sisters, I want us to do that uh, in your home. Get your bread, get your, uh, your juice or whatever you may have um, as a way of a sacred moment that we want to uh, remember our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's bow our head right when you're at the tongue. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to eat of your body and drink of your blood. We ask that you forgive us of all our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, and allow us to take this and be worthy of taking it because of the shed blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, I got this. I wanted to put this up here because many times we get so used to doing things, but let's, let's look at why we do what we do on the first Sunday and then even on this Resurrection Sunday. Here it is right here. In observing communion, we are remembering who? Christ and all that he has done for us. Watch this. In his life, his death and resurrection. And so Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, he pins in verse 24 from the New International Version. That's the scripture I want to read as we prepare to uh, drink of his blood and eat of his body. Here it is right here. And when he had given thanks, go ahead and get your bread, get your crackers. I'm going to do the same thing. When he had given thanks, when he had given thanks, he break, watch this. He broke it, broke what? He broke the bread that symbolizes his body. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us all eat of the bread. took the cup, which is the shed blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for the remission of our sin, and let us all drink of his blood. Now, that's a lot of water representing his blood. I need to drink all of it. And you need to drink it all, too. Watch this. For the remission of our sins. Amen. Amen. We thank you, the Lord, for this time to have communion together. We pray that you all have enjoyed our worship service, our virtual worship service, the marriage and singles conference, and even the abbreviated word um, that we was able to share with you. Uh, and so we just pray that you was blessed. If you enjoyed both of those, send hearts up, thumbs up, if you don't mind wherever you're at. Well, let's get ready to give back to the Lord by way of tithes and offering, and then we shall have you to enjoy the rest of your resurrection Sunday. We pray that you all enjoyed yesterday what I will drive through as we allow um, the, the church and the community to come through. We had bags, we had hot dogs, we had, I had a great time yesterday. I got a chance to see a lot of you that I have not been able to see. And so we was practicing social distancing. So I just want to thank you all, those who have was able to help out. Thank you so much. And this was sponsored as we have put a label on it from the, on behalf of the fatherhood and men ministry. And I want to take this time to thank our fathers and our men of the church and the community for what you do and uh, how you represent it to let us know, watch this, men can be men. Good God Almighty. So thank you so much. All right, let's get ready to get back to the Lord. There's several ways you know you can do it. You can come out of church, 2930 Newton Road. You can mail it, P.O. Box 1614, Carrollton, Georgia. You can use the push pay. That's the end of y'all, Clem, C-L-E-M. And there's several options on there that you can use. You can do your tithes and offer. You want to give to the love of love off to the pastor. You can do that. Or you can use my own personal um, cash app, and that's the dollar sign, Vincent Gerald Dort. You can do that. And I want to thank you all so much for those who saw it to the ministry by way of the love offerings. You know, small or large, I say thank you so much. That's about it, but yet. Let's give back to the Lord, and then we'll be on our way out. Eternal God, we thank you. We give you glory now for this time to give back to you as you have blessed us. Bless those who have. Bless those who just do not have, Lord. We pray that you open up heaven's windows, pull them out of blessing, that they have not enough room to receive the cup run over. And as they cup run over, Lord, they be a blessing to others. And so we say thank you right now. We speak and decree upon their life right now that they shall be the head and not the tail. They shall be above and not beneath. They shall be the lender and not the bar, Lord. Allow them to have good health, good prosperity in their life. And all, all that we do, we know that it was because of you. And we say thank you right now. We thank you for Calvary, Lord. We thank you for what it means that we have forgiveness, Father God. We, we thank you, Father God. We have faith. And we also thank you for the final 
point of life, knowing that we have victory, that we have victory in you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, come on, give where you at. Use your um, your uh, your device that you have. Use your phone if you need to. Just do the tithes and offering. And y'all, you know, thank you all so much. Um, there's some great things that's taking place. We just got through getting the driveway in front of the um, the Family Life Center pool, and I'm going to be sharing that video with you all uh, very soon. So we, we want to say thank you all so much for that. All right, I love you all. God bless you, and y'all have a blessed, blessed Resurrection Sunday. Stay safe. Um, you're going out looking for eggs and everything. Be safe, okay? And uh, once again, God bless you. We love you. You all have a blessed, blessed Resurrection Sunday. Look for some other information uh, regarding um, our uh, church anniversary for next Sunday. I'll be sending out information on how we're going to do that. I'm praying about doing something. So I, I just don't want to tell you right now until I continue to talk to the Lord. Get all my direction. Okay? Stand to your feet. That's time. Come on, let's do it. And we get ready to end and get some good laughter in. All right, eternal God, once again, we say thank you for this time together. Thank you for this time to deal with marriage and the singles. Thank you for allowing us to be able to deal with your word in regards of Calvary and um, what it means to us. We thank you for this resurrection Sunday. Thank you for dying on the cross for us. Forgive us once again, Lord, for all our sins. Be with us throughout this week. No hurt, harm, or danger will come upon us. And all that we do, Lord, you get the glory and honor. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Now to him is able to keep us from falling. Begin to forgive us right now for all unrighteousness, Lord. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Restore us right now, Lord. Allow us to be what you will have us to be. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, give God hearts. Give some, send up some hearts. Send some thumbs up if you don't mind. And we look forward to seeing you all next week. Look forward to seeing you all next week. Send the hearts up, thumbs up. Let's get some good laughter here. God bless you all. Thanks. Thanks